strategies to help you become more productive, profitable, create progress, and lead a ridiculously fulfilling life. Welcome to the Susan Sly Project with your host, the woman who wants you to succeed, Susan Sly. Hello, I am so excited you are here and I have a question for you. Have you ever been bullied? And I know the answer for many of you is yes, statistically, or maybe your child is getting bullied. And we think about bullying often as something that happens in the schoolyard, but the reality is it happens in the workplace, it happens in business, it happens even in churches. I mean, seriously. So my guest today is the world-renowned expert. He's called the Master Negotiator, and I'll be bringing him out in a moment. He appears on Fox News all the time as an expert. He's got a brand new book out, and I love this book. I'm excited. I don't say that about every book. People send me a lot of books. I don't say it about everyone, but I love this book. Before I bring him out, a couple of quick announcements. So the first thing is I am doing a live event. I haven't done a live event in a few years. Um, as many of you know, if you tune into the show every week, I got very ill in Africa a few years ago. I was actually in bed, had an amoeba shutting down my organs, <laughs> went through all sorts of medical work, testing everything, but I am back. And I know some of you are a bit like, you're back. We haven't seen you on fire like this in a while. So I am doing a live event in Phoenix on September 29th. It is called Sales Nirvana. And I'm going to be doing teaching NLP. My guest today is also NLP certified. And so I'm going to be teaching NLP for sales professionals. We're going to do modeling and mirroring and the perfect NLP presentation to help you nail your presentations, whether you're doing them virtually or whether you're doing them live. I know many realtors are coming, people in all walks of business. I have a friend who owns a clothing company sending his staff to that event. So if you want to get tickets, they are only $97 and you just go to salesnirvana.com. I am also teaching a virtual NLP class. And that class is um, very close to selling out. Actually, it's going to be four 90-minute sessions. It is NLP for business. And in that class, I'm going to teach you how to really shift people's neurology. Because in business, people want to do business with us based on how we make them feel. So do check that out. And anytime that you want to find out what's going on, I encourage you to go to www.susansla.com. I send out an email once a week. It has amazing content. And my subscribers get better prices. They get coupons, discounts on everything it is that I do. They get the inside track. I also do a Facebook Live every Monday, Susan Sly Live. You can check out my fan page. If you've got a topic, just go to my website, susansly.com. We have a little AI bot there. You can put the subject topic for Seasons Live and definitely I will check it out. So with that, I want to get into the goods today. So everyone has either experienced bullying themselves or had someone in their life, a family member, a friend, acquaintance, a boss who was bullied. And you know you've been bullied when you feel pressured, demeaned, or anger, and you walk away from that situation feeling like you've lost ground. You gave in to demands, you agreed to something that wasn't in your best interest, and often we spend a lot of time beating ourselves up. And we do, in my personal opinion, just going off script here for a moment, we do more damage to ourselves psychologically when these things happen than the person actually did to us. My guest today is the master negotiator, not a master negotiator, the master negotiator and body language expert. His new book, Negotiating with a Bully, Take Charge and Turn the Tables on People Trying to Push You Around. It's going to teach you how to recognize bullies, interpret their signals and body language, and how to skillfully deal with them in different forms and environments. And he is a Fox News contributor. He is a New York number one New York Times bestselling author. I mean, he is also an amazing human being. And every time we just before the interview, we were on video. And every time I see him, I just smile. He lights me up. So I want to welcome the amazing Greg Williams. Thanks for being back on the show. I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you, Susan. And my goodness, talking about an introduction lighting someone up, you have definitely done that for me. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. And I know Greg was just saying before the interview, he was at the National Speakers Association event and he came home, but not alone. He was a little under the weather. And I, Greg, I want to thank you for being here today and just adding so much value to our listeners, because this is a topic that affects everyone. And 
even though I've read the book, I've read your other book, and I know <laughs> you, will you share with the listeners, were you ever bullied? Oh, yes, I was. As a matter of fact, when I was a kid, I was extremely thin. Some people said skinny. And I was short. Well, I've now grown up to be 6'2", 230 pounds. But I'll tell you how I got to that point in a moment. When I was a kid, the older kids would beat up younger kids, take their money. Uh, and I, I learned to do one of two things, which were the options we had at that time. It was either to fight or run. I learned to run. <laughs> and that uh, was something that I was able to utilize throughout my life because you've heard the cliche before, he who fights and runs away lives to fight another day. Well, there are situations in which if you're being bullied, you need to make sure when addressing that situation that you have enough wherewithal, that's to say resources and or other thoughts, processes of how you're going to combat the bully such that you overcome his antics and you need to know when to do it, how to do it, and with what resources to use to do it. And thus, when I was a kid, yes, I was bullied. But as I got older, I started building my body up, number one, to combat in size the bully's effort simply because he was bigger than I was to pick on me. And that made some people take attention as to, well, wait a minute now, there may be more to pay if I engage this person because he's not this puny kid that he used to be over the years. And I say all of that, Susan, to say, you have to be mindful of what a bully is actually attempting to do in his efforts to bully you. Does the bully want the attention that maybe you backing down will grant him? Is he doing it for another reason because someone else is egging him on, et cetera, et cetera? But as a kid, I was bullied. As I grew up, I learned to run first and then negotiate my way out of situations. And here I am today with another book. <laughs> <laughs> Run first and negotiate. The, you know, the, um, we're going to get into in a moment the sign someone is bullying because it, it, sometimes people can come off as aggressive, but it doesn't mean mm. they're a bully. I want to step back as a parent. I know you're a parent as well. And mm -hmm. I, I was bullied as a child, and it, it was awful. I had you know, every scarlet letter in the book, if we talk about mm. Nathaniel Hawthorne's book. So I was a um, visible minority family in a very small town in Ontario. I was being raised by a single dad. And the, the kids, and I was fat, oh, that's the trifecta mm. right there, and I had <laughs> buck teeth, okay, so I got all this going on, and I would get called horrible names, I got called the N-word, I got called um, mm. Chinky Chinky Chinaman, um, the Bubba Sue was a nickname, and I would, I would go home crying, now in those, in modern era, kids beat each other up on social media and when I was growing up they just physically beat you up so there was no mm -hmm. there was no misleading signal signals I'm not trying to make light of this I would just get physically beaten and one day I just got to the point where I couldn't take it anymore and it was winter in Ontario Greg so I'm going to paint the picture here and the mm -hmm. chief bully of them all um, his name was John and I was I was just so hurt so distraught and we had had a bit of freezing rain and I made an ice ball and I did not have the best coordination and even to this day I don't like to put myself down for anything the reason I'm a runner and not a Zumba instructor there's a reason for that so anyway I <laughs> I can dance <laughs> but for some reason anyway that's a whole other story so I get this ice ball and I make it and I whip it at him and I had never ever thrown a softball or anything I had actually done a great throw but this one hit him in the face and it got like there was this big red welt and it was that moment and I don't believe we should you know use violence against violence but it was in that moment that I felt I took back my power and I think and I love your perspective on this what would you say to a parent who has a child who's getting 
bullied at school, what steps would you say to that parent? Because, you know, it's one thing for us to say to our children, oh, stand up for yourself or whatever, but you, this is your area of expertise. What's your Mm -hmm. advice? Well, I'll tell you, I'll go back to childhood days again. As you just spoke a moment ago, there are times when people just get fed up and tired of being bullied. Mm -hmm. Years ago, the parents of the kids that I grew up with would tell the kids if they knew that kid was being bullied, either you go out and fight that bully and beat him up, or I'm going to give you a beating or something Mm -hmm. of that nature. That was the mindset of parents back then. In today's environment, I don't necessarily suggest that kids go into environments and fight someone because, uh, unfortunately enough, we live in a different world today where people do crazier things now than they would have done years ago. Mm -hmm. Years ago, when I was a kid, uh, so you might get beaten up a little bit and that would be it. In today's environment, uh, more, much more severe damage might uh, come about as a result of confronting a bully by literally fighting him. <clears throat> Nevertheless, in today's environment, you need to understand from a parent's perspective why your kid is being picked on. What is it that the bully sees in your kid that makes that bully want to perpetrate whatever actions against that kid that the bully engages in. Once you identify that, then you can address how you can go about combating the bully on behalf of your kid, and you don't necessarily have to let the bully know that you're standing behind your kid, as it were. So, what does that look like? You could either talk to other parents to make sure that they are aware that your kid is being bullied, parents that you already know will be on your side. You could also talk to administrators in school or whatever be the case to make them aware of what is occurring. Now, what a parent has to be very mindful of is the potential blowback that may occur on their kid as a result of an administrator bringing the bully in and saying, well, I understand you've been picking on Johnny, and since you're picking on Johnny, you better stop it or else something's going to happen to you. Next thing you know, either the bully confronts your kid and say, oh, so you ran and told your mama, huh? Well, huh, bam, go tell her this or something like that. Mm -hmm. And, and, And or the bully has one of his cohorts actually attack your kid. So you have to understand again, what it is that the bully sees in your kid. And bullies usually seek weakness in someone before they will bully them. And the bully is looking for the gratification that comes about as a result of engaging in bullying activities. The bully wants to appear to be large and in charge. He wants respect from everyone else. If you find a way to take that respect from him, even if it means demeaning the bully through let's say, um, court, uh, um, through other means, you then gain leverage over that bully. Be the bully a kid or someone that's an adult, and you're always seeking ways to gain leverage over a bully such that you can use that leverage to combat his efforts. Mm. That is a fantastic answer because the often as a parent, and, and one of my kids was bullied that it's that tendency to just like get in there and be the mama bear or the papa mm-hmm. bear mm-hmm. And, and to step back for a moment and, and have that discerning time and say, okay, why, why is this situation happening? What is it? And then really the having the situation with regard to that open dialogue, because one of the things that I found, and I'm sure you have too, is that people who are hurtful are often people that are hurting themselves, especially when it comes to children. Children don't Mm. tend to just be bullies without having some kind of triggers in their own environment. So Mm -hmm. I love that. Now, in your book, you talk about, and I was fascinated by this, the difference between someone who's just aggressive versus someone who's a bully. And you lay out specific signs. So what are the signs that someone is a genuine bully? They're in it for power and gain versus someone who's just got an aggressive personality or having that kind of a day. Well, that's a great question because you have to understand someone's intent 
before you can label them a bully. Someone may be simply passive aggressive. And if that's the way they see themselves, they don't see themselves as a bully. Thus, if you feel pressured or bullied by someone's actions, first you verify it by saying something along the lines of, you know, I, uh, hmm, <clears throat> I'm feeling a little uncomfortable. Uh, I, well, truth be known, I even feel a little bullied by you. Is that your intent? Mm. Now, the person could say something Along the lines of, well, (laughs) it definitely is my intent. I mean, don't you know who you're talking to or something like that? Okay, you now know the person is engaging in actions that is intended to bully you, to intimidate you. And you, first of all, you should already have some thought of plan in mind when you confront the person in that manner. Now that you've gotten validation Per how you plan to engage in that situation anyway, you should know what your next steps will be. He said he's trying to bully me. I told him I sensed that he was bullying me. He's confirmed that he's bullying me. Now I know that I have five of my friends standing right over in the corner. So I'm just going to glance over my shoulder, look at them, and glance back at the bully. And I'll say something like, why are you doing that? Now, that nonverbal gesture of glancing over my shoulder because I know I have my friends that have my back and glancing back at the bully suggests to the bully in a nonverbal manner, wait a minute, I'm not alone. So, Mr. Bully, be careful. If you pick on me, you may end up being the bullied person by doing so. Let's take it in reverse. The person says, oh, no, I'm I'm sorry. That's not my intent. I'm not trying to bully you. I'm, I'm just trying to communicate with you and maybe it's too forcibly in doing so and I apologize. Okay, now you know you're not dealing with someone that's a bully but someone that from time to time may appear to be aggressive. To the degree that person changes his or her behavior, you know that you now have someone that you can communicate with in a manner that will allow them to Be cognizant of the fact that you're aware that that person can become overly aggressive or whatever title you want to place on it. The point of all of this is, though, not only do you have to identify what you think and validate what it is that that person is trying to do, but you need to confront them in some way, shape, or manner. And again, you always want to plan for how you're going to address a bully because one thing you don't want to do is to back a real bully into a corner whereby he has no choice but to do something irrational that you had not anticipated. It's like, you know, kicking the uh, wasp nest, right? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And you'd be in the wasp's nest. (laughs) Yeah, no, you don't want to do that. The, The getting their intent, it's, that is unique because I find, especially in business, what, often will happen is then there will be a lot of sidebar talk. Oh, I think so-and-so is a bully or I think so-and-so, as opposed to saying to the person, I find your behavior extremely aggressive. Is that deliberate? Mm -hmm. And, And to use that technique, almost like get the elephant out of the room is so refreshing because who has time for nonsense and drama? Right? Like just, just flesh it out. Is that the person's intent? Would you, in your opinion, would you say that some people are just naturally looking for the upper hand in any situation? Oh, definitely so. And again, dependent upon how you feel per that person's actions against you, you can either choose to address it. Choose to sidestep it because the person is not that important to you, and the person only acts that way when the two of you are in private. Mm -hmm. If the two of you are in private environments when such occurs and you tell the person, look, I I don't like what you're doing. Now, notice even the tonality of my voice. I don't like what you're doing. And you can't see my body language, Susan, but I literally use my hands to push my words out as to suggest I'm 
pushing his antics away from me, which is why body language when dealing with a bully is so important also. You heard me speak about the nonverbal gesture a moment ago about looking over your shoulder, having your friends already there, and that suggesting, wait a minute, I'm not by myself. When you're dealing with someone that may be a bully or someone that may be trying to bully you, only confront the person to the degree that it takes the energy away from whatever else would be more beneficial to you. That means if you're only going to be engaged with the bully on a sometime basis and it's not bad, however you wish to rate bad the engagement that you have with him, don't don't confront him. Leave, leave him alone. Or get someone else to do it on your behalf. And that's a tactic that I have used on many a times with much larger entities in business to make sure that they knew, wait a minute now, this guy has larger entities that he can use to combat whatever efforts we're trying to do. And Susan, if I may do a quick aside, even with small business owners, with small business owners, never, ever, ever think that you are in a position that you can't negotiate better with a larger corporation simply because they're huge and you're small. Understand, you have value. The value that you have has to be exploited to the point that it's raised high enough for you, number one, to appreciate it, and then for you to understand why that larger corporation is even talking to you. They're doing so because they sense some value in you also. And thus, the more you know about how and why they are engaging with you for what outcome they're seeking, the better you'll be able to stand up to them. And it all starts in the mind. Mm -hmm. My motto is, as you know, you're always negotiating, so you have time to position yourself at all times, even against larger entities that may have this, may be known for bullying uh, smaller corporations. Well, and I think it applies to clients, too. I had, um, years ago, I went to this hair salon, and the owner was notorious for firing clients. And he would fire clients if that client was aggressive to one of the front desk people, was um, trying to bully their way um, into something or, you know, overtly complaining. So it actually kept the clients in line. And, mm-hmm. and I personally believe that in business, setting standards of what you will tolerate and just being very clear about it. I know my personal opinion is if someone is being aggressive or I hear they're, they're there's a lot of back talk. I'll pick up the phone and say, "I." My favorite word, Greg, of this year is fascinated. My other word is expansive. So, fascinated is like. So, I'll pick up the phone. I'll be like, "So, Mary, I am fascinated because I heard this, and I don't know if it's true, right?" And and she's like, "Oh," and I've had to. I've done this like actually the past two weeks in a row, and, and it's amazing to watch people observing their body language, their tone in their voice when you come. I'm fascinated. Wow, it's it's interesting. I want to ask you. <laughs> in the book, you talk about different motivators of bullies because. I personally believe that, you know, when we're, when we're with someone who is a genuine bully, that we give away our power if we put them on a pedestal. And, you know, I know you and I were both raised not to worship false idols, right? Mm-hmm. So, so mm-hmm. one of the, the strategies is contemplating what the motivation is. So it, can you talk about that? What are the different motivators for people who are real bullies? Well, in some cases, bullies may be moved to engage in a particular action simply because of the people that they associate with. Mm. They may be in a group, an organization that states these are the norms of the group. If you want to participate in this group, you have to adhere to these norms. Uh, we know in some cases, gangs have initiation rights whereby people have to go out and do things that they may or may not otherwise do, but they engage in simply because they want to show the other members of that gang that, hey, I'm worthy of being in the gang and here's how I'm going to prove it. They are being bullied 
by someone or an entity that's even larger than themselves. And thus, if you knew they were being bullied by, as an example, by higher gang members, you might seek somehow or another, and <clears throat> this is not something I'm going to necessarily suggest, but in a different setting, you might seek to align yourself with those that are higher than that particular bully such that you then use the leverage of those individuals to say, wait a minute, I have these guys, again, to keep my back covered. Understanding the source that a bully is motivated by gives you the insight that you need before you can even really craft a plan of how you're going to combat that bully. And I'll tell you something. You used the word fascinated a moment ago, and I could literally hear, feel the word <laughs> as you were saying it. And I was thinking to myself, oh my goodness, what a fantastic word to use. Now listen to me, fascinated, fantastic. There are different ways you can use uh, language to literally shock a bully uh, and thus disrupt his thought process such that you can momentarily push him off guard. If you sense that, you can then fill that void while he's in thought process to say something along the lines of, you really don't want to engage me in this particular manner. Now, do you? Now, you can say it depending upon the setting that you're in, in a low tone manner, if others might actually hear it. Or you can use a, a nonverbal body language gesture of literally stepping in a little closer to him and saying, you really don't want to engage me in this manner, do you? Well, depending upon the bully's intent at that particular point in time, the bully may just leave you alone altogether. But the word fascinated is something that also says, wow, this is really out of the norm. Golly, this is so strange. I can't believe it's actually happening or that you would do so. Mm. And it, let's talk about language and the semantics of it, because in, in, in negotiation, the last time I had you on the show, too, we were talking about disrupting, right? Disrupting someone's pattern. And so we mm-hmm. can use words to disrupt a pattern. Um, so fascinating is my one this year. What are some others that spring to mind that you have coached people to use or you have used successfully or even observed? Because when you're on Fox and they bring you on to talk about certain situations, I know you see it on a daily basis, people who are masterful at disrupting someone else's pattern. So can mm-hmm. you? what are some other words people could use? Really? <laughs> Just like that. Really? <laughs> and someone goes, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, really? And then I go, really? <laughs> and they'll go, uh, what do you mean by really? Now, I've already disrupted them at that particular point in time. And I may start to echo what they say by saying something along the lines of, well, what do you think I mean by really? Or something of that nature. The point is, once you start getting the person that you're talking to to start answering your questions, you've taken control of a situation at that particular moment in time. Another word that I'll use is, or words I'll use uh, happens to be, say that again? And they'll repeat it and I'll go, say that again? And they'll repeat it and I'll go, my gosh, really? (laughs) And I keep them in this mindset and they're going, the heck is wrong with this guy? But again, they've now broken out of the pattern that they were in. And it's yet another way to gain control in a situation that control may be slipping away from you. That is fabulous. (laughs) That's funny. Really? Really? (laughs) Really, Greg? Can you say that again? I like um, startled. That's another word that I love this year. It's almost like, you know, how the that people have, you know, they set goals for the year. I like to pick words for the year. So my other one is startled. And I used that not long ago. And I said, I I heard contextually that this person had said some things. And um, I I said, I am actually startled that someone (laughs) of your impeccable character would say something like that. So, you know, I, of course, didn't believe it. (laughs) That is fantastic. 
positioning. It really is because <laughs> people always want to be in sync with what they appear to present to other individuals. And thus, if you're telling that person, wow, what you're now telling me is so out of character for the way that you normally project yourself, the person has to stop and think, oh my goodness, I'm really off the mark today. I must be really (laughs) off or something of that nature. But Susan, see, here's the thing. You are so good with NLP and just interacting with people anyway that some folks that let's say, haven't reached that level of skill yet, need to learn more about how to engage others by utilizing these particular techniques. And by doing so, they will also find themselves in a much better position than they otherwise would have. So I'm not giving a commercial, but at the same time, I'm just acknowledging when you are in in a situation whereby you truly need to understand how to engage someone in the manner that will allow you to gain what you're seeking from that uh, individual, you need to be around people that can bestow that insight upon you. No, you just need to read Greg's book. Like, this is where I'm going with this because this is uh, the I, I will be your commercial because this is really, and I say this with such love and respect, this is one of the most important books I've read all year because the I see so many people who were bullied when they were young. And they come into business and they're still running those programs. So, Mm -hmm. you know, let's say they're in a direct sales business and someone comes into their business and there's some conflict there and that person will literally turtle because they, it triggers all of these past programs for them. Mm -hmm. So I will be your commercial. I want to talk about what to do because in the book you have some different stuff so i'm not giving away the whole thing you're getting a peek behind the curtain but you need to order greg's book the let's talk about priming so one of the in the strategy of how someone is going to deal with it you know priming and then so could you talk about priming and then going and role playing because especially for the people who when there's any conflict or any perceived aggression they freak out and they run away and then they decide they're going to quit being an entrepreneur and maybe they were making the best cupcakes or they were the best you know bookkeeper or whatever it is they were doing and they could have added tremendous value but they allowed one person to take them out of their game so can you start with those steps how can uh, someone prepare? Yeah, I definitely can. And just uh, as, an, as an FYI, when I was talking about not having a commercial, I was talking about your <laughs> September the 29th NLP for Sales <laughs> Professional event, uh, because that's where people should go to learn more about how to present themselves in a manner such that they, that they don't get bullied. Okay. <laughs> to prime <laughs> Thank me. you. <laughs> <laughs> to prime me. We're having too much fun today. It's all I'm good. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Uh, but but to, uh, when it comes to priming, you also need to know how people use certain words. You mentioned fascinated before. You mentioned startled before. And if I said to you, oh, my gosh, Susan. I'm so startled that things are going the way that they are today. Now, your word is something you just heard me say, which subliminally, psychologically, then will have you feeling as though you're more connected with me simply because I use that particular word. That's a way to prime someone also. If you use words that another individual uses that has the same meaning to that person as the way you're using it, you prime them to start seeing you differently and they start thinking differently about you, having different feelings about you. For those that were primed when they were younger by negative experiences, oh, you'll never grow up to be anything, and now they are making them the the best baker in the world or whatever be the case, and they have one particular situation that doesn't turn out to be as good as they thought it was going to be, and someone says, oh, this business will never turn out to be anything that it could be. That person becomes triggered at times because that person heard similar words when he or she was younger. Here's the point. Be mindful of what triggers you towards negative thoughts, number one. Number two, If you are aware of what triggers you, 
be prepared to control it. And when I say be prepared, I have literally practiced how I will react in certain situations. When I was a lot younger, remember, I said I had been picked on a lot, beat up a lot by older kids. And as I got bigger, I became more cognizant of the fact that, no, you're not going to do that to me. Even there were times when I was younger that I used to engage in road rage simply because somebody cut me off on the highway. Well, you learn to deal with such things because I knew I had been primed from a kid of having people pick on me that now I was triggered to become enraged simply because somebody cut me off. And it's like, are you serious? The person uh, has a, a medical emergency. They're trying to get to the hospital. You can use any thought process that you need to engage in to calm yourself down. But when it comes to priming, know what triggers will trigger you. And when it comes to bullying, you should know what triggers might trigger that bully such that you engage him to move him in a direction that you would also want him to go in so that he discontinues his bullying efforts towards you. Mm. That is some powerful wisdom right there. <laughs> and, that's, <laughs> and that's just not for bullies. It's any negotiation. And you wrote about that in your last book and really using modeling. Right. Yes. And, and yes. modeling people and especially using their words, even breathing. I'm, I'm going to go down a rabbit hole just for fun because it's, you know, you and I, when, when you're on the show, we always have a lot of fun. So one of the things Tony Robbins says, and um, Tony is also NLP trained from the same lineage as I am, Bandler. And so Tony talks about when a marriage is in trouble, the first thing you have to fix is in the bedroom. And the first thing you want to fix in the bedroom is just breathing together. Now, I the reason I'm doing that is because I'm anchoring the audience to remember this next thing we're going to talk about, which is that in a, in a negotiation with a bully, things like matching their breathing, matching their tone, matching the cadence at which they speak can disarm them. And those are the things that you're writing about in your book, this priming. Very quickly, you mentioned role-playing in the book. And I know when so many people think about role playing, they're like, I'm not going to role play, Mr. Williams, like as wise as you are, I'm not going to role play. Why is it essential? And how can someone role play? Like, let's set the tone. So let's say someone knows that they're going to have a meeting with someone who has been very aggressive, who has been bullying them. You suggest role playing. What would that look like for that person? First of all, you need to have someone that can imitate the actions of the person that you think you'll be engaged with or in in a live environment. And then you want to have that person, the person that's helping you uh, role play, the person that's playing the part of the individual that you'll be engaged with, literally mimic, uh, mimic rather the actions, the body gestures, the tonality of the other person, what you're trying to do is to uncover ways that you can confront and or combat that person's actions. By role-playing, number one, you mentally start to prepare yourself subliminally for how you're going to engage in the, uh, with that person. Number two, you start to gain more, call it mental strength about how you can do so. And number three, you will uncover some thoughts that you had not considered before. Now, that last uh, thought can turn out to be pure gold for you. So, if you do engage in role play, number one, the benefit is that you will become more self-assured about how you can interact with that individual. You'll be able to model that person's actions in a play mode that you can then use in a real life mode, and you'll have a sense of propriety per exactly what you're going to allow to have happen in that particular session. Mm. That is powerful. And so my mind went, you know, how, how much is so often dealing with someone who's very aggressive or a bully can be stressful, but how much fun would it be, especially to say to a girlfriend or say to a friend, hey, I need your help with this. Let's have some fun. And I know you'll probably mm -hmm. end up in hysterics. And that's the other thing. When you can take a situation that is stressful and put some humor on top of it, <laughs> like that it's, it's, it, it helps so much. 
<laughs> oh, it definitely does. And Susan, here's something else, too. We have to realize what stress is. Stress is us realizing that we may not know the total outcome of a situation, and thus, because we're not 100% sure what the outcome might be, we start to have stress build up within us. One way to fight that is to realize nothing is 100% sure in life, but the better prepared you are for different circumstances that you might encounter, the more ready you'll be to address those circumstances, thus reducing the stress. Well, that is so perfect. That's a great tie-in to truth or truth. Because I've been, ah. I've been contemplating all day what I get to ask you, so it's so fun. <laughs> okay, okay. So before Go for we it. play Truth or Truth, Greg's book, whose forward is by the amazing Harvey McKay, seven-time New York Times best-selling author, negotiating with a bully, and it is really and truly on my must-reads of this year. It's I love this book. I really and truly do. And thank you for making it easy to read. Thank you for, like, it's just packed with salient tips. I would even say, you know, this is a great book for your teen to read. I mean, Greg is, he just has such great high moral countenance that there is nothing in here that I wouldn't allow my children to see. So thank you for this. All right, let's play Truth or Truth. <laughs> I am ready. I am ready. Okay. Ask me whatever you want. <laughs> well, you know, I would never embarrass you, so <laughs> don't let stress come into the situation. <laughs> anyway, okay, here we go. Uh, Susan, if you could be anyone other than who you are, who would that be, number one, and why? Mm. <laughs> no. A person or a fictional person? Hey, you can answer that question any way you like. <laughs> okay. Well, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, there's like the answer is like, oh, if I say this, then, you know, everyone's going to think this, but I'm not that kind of girl. So I'm just going to lay it out. So the, the first thing that comes to mind and this is really really funny is we were we just the kids were we were watching the avengers and mm -hmm. um i would like to have some mad skills like black widow yep mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> scarlett johansson's character i would say yeah and i'd like to look like that in a suit like that like that's serious <laughs> <Definitely>. <laughs> Well, hey, I hear the why for sure. <laughs> yeah, there's the why. Oh, okay, on, a, okay. on a more on a more serious note, I think mm -hmm. that um, anyone who you know, often when I'm in Europe, you know, I'll say one of my first questions I'll ask people is, "How many languages do you speak?" And and in Europe, the standard is that kids go to school, they learn four or five, and I would say one thing that I would love to truly master in this lifetime is language and to be able to mm. speak. I want to speak Italian. I do speak some French, Spanish, mm -hmm. Mandarin. So anyone who has mastered multiple languages is someone I truly admire because I think it's, it's just tremendous. Um, mm. Okay. I got to put you on the spot. So okay. um, we, you get to be any musician that currently lives or has lived um anyone you want sing any line from one of their songs <laughs> oh my goodness um ah uh, okay you know it's interesting because louis armstrong came to my mind mm, first that. yeah and the reason it did or he or the reason he um that came to my mind is because he was somewhat of a trailblazer in his time and i like doing things providing insight insights for others that allow them to have a more enhanced life. Now, as far as singing, boy, oh boy, you might lose some of your audience members right now, but... Uh, I yeah. rapped on the Jesse Itzler episode, so, and Jesse did not rap, so I did Young MC, Greg, so I'm like... Oh. 
they, if they, and this is the mo- one of the most talked about episodes. So I'm, I'm ready. Bring it on. And if, if okay. it makes you feel better, I'll sing something after to make you look really good. Okay. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay. You might have a tall order there, but here we go. Okay. Uh, Louis Armstrong. Um, Hello, Dolly. Well, hello, Dolly. It's so nice to have you back where you belong. You're looking swell, Dolly. I don't know the rest of the words, so anyway. That was beautiful. (laughs) I was closing my eyes. I grew up listening to Louis Armstrong with my dad. My dad loved Louis Armstrong and... um, you know, our music was a big thing for us. My dad played the piano. We listened to a oh, lot of oh, oh. Louis Armstrong, Ray Charles, and uh, Frank Sinatra. And, you know, so that was beautiful. I do not have to sing because that's like, I will if you ask me to, but I'm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, it's your show. You can do whatever you wish. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, if, if it makes you feel better. So this is my go to karaoke song. And I will preface this by saying, I'll just do the first line or two, but, um, so I love this song and, and many, many years ago when I was diagnosed with MS and I lost my business, all this stuff happened. I would listen to the song over and over and over again. And about gosh, Oh, 13 years ago, it was someone that I was working with said, Hey, will you do a call with this person and give her some coaching advice? And I said, Absolutely. You know, who is it? And she said, their name is Gloria. And I went, okay, what's their last name? She said, Gaynor. I was like, Miss Gloria, Miss Gloria. I was freaking (laughs) out. So talk about priming, role playing, all of it. And I don't get starstruck, Uh, but that was like, oh. And then she answered the uh, phone. It's like, hello. And I was like, (laughs) (laughs) and I got... And I, you know, I couldn't speak. It was like a movie. I was like, oh, Miss Gloria. So here we go. At first I was afraid. I was petrified. Just thinking I could never live without you by my side. And then I spent so many nights thinking how you did me wrong. I grew strong. I learned how to get along. And so you bang. Anyway, so there you go. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. (laughs) And 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 I will just claim that neither Greg nor I were auto-tuned today. So there you (laughs) go. Well, my friend, it is always a joy to have you here. I cannot thank you enough. It's it's so fun and you're amazing. And uh, every time I, I see you on television, I just, you know, I'm like, oh, it's Greg. So oh, thank you for being oh. here. Oh, you're more than welcome. And Susan, if I may say so, you have a personality that truly lightens up any environment that you're in that makes others appreciate more of what they can do and be, I guess, buoyed by the feeling that you can guide others to better places in their lives. And I want to thank you for that. Thank you, my friend. I Mm. receive that with such love. So Mm. Greg and I are bold. And so if this has been a great show, we would love a five-star review on iTunes. And if this is served you and you know someone who is being bullied or anyone in business or someone with a child who's getting bullied, please do share this on your social media. You can always shout out or tweet at me um, on Twitter, Susan underscore Sly, and LinkedIn, Susan Sly, Instagram, Susan Sly, and Facebook, Susan Sly Live. I didn't get Susan Sly on either Facebook or on Twitter, so there you go, but I'm still there. Anyway, so with that, (laughs) God bless all of you. We'll see you in a future episode. Thank you again, Greg, for being here. Definitely get Greg's book, Negotiate with the bully. It's amazing to have you all here and we will see you next time. Thank you, Susan. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been another epic episode of the Susan Sly Project. For more tips, strategies, and ideas, visit www.susansly.com.